We have two types of errors in hypothesis testing. We have the type 1 error and the type 2 errors. And for today, we're going to differentiate the difference between type 1 and type 2 errors. Now, in significance tests, we know that we have two competing hypotheses. It's the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Now, committing the type 1 error is making or rejecting the null hypothesis even if the null hypothesis is true. And committing a type 2 error is not rejecting the null hypothesis even if the null hypothesis is said to be false. Those are the type of errors that we're going to show on hypothesis testing for today's lesson. And I'm going to give you an example of this particular error in a hypothesis testing. Now for this word problem, a potato chip producer and a supplier of potatoes agree that each shipment of potatoes must meet certain quality standards. Now if less than 8% of the potatoes in the shipment have blemishes, the producer will take the entire truckload. Otherwise, the truck will be sent away to get another load of potatoes from the supplier. Now, it isn't practical to inspect every potato in a given shipment, so instead the producer inspects a sample of potatoes. On the basis of the sample results, the potato chip producer uses a significance test to decide whether to take or reject the shipment. So in this particular word problem or hypothesis testing, we are going to reject a truckload of potatoes if it's hypothesis or if its proportion is said to be equal to 8%. Otherwise, if it's just less than 8% of blemished potatoes in the truckloads of the shipment, we're going to take the truckloads for our um, production. Now here's our hypothesis testing and an example of errors that we might encounter in producing a hypothesis test for this word problem. Now let's simulate the hypothesis testing for that word problem. Now P in that word problem will be the proportion of potatoes with blemishes in the shipment. And the null hypothesis will be P is equal to 0.08 and the alternative hypothesis of P less than 0.08. Which means as a producer, I'm going to accept the truckload of potatoes if there's only less than 8% of the potatoes that are blemished. And if the blemished potato is going to be 8% based on our sample, we're not going to accept the truckload of potatoes from the supplier. Now, how do we commit a type 1 error for this particular word problem? Now, a type 1 error is said to be rejecting the null hypothesis even though the null hypothesis is deemed to be true. Now, for this example, let's say we rejected the null hypothesis Although the null hypothesis is true, we are committing a type 1 error. So when we reject the null, and the null hypothesis is said to be that the potatoes or the truckloads of potato is actually 8% of them that is blemished, we are committing a type 1 error. And a type 2 error is when we reject the alternative hypothesis, even if the alternative hypothesis is true, then we are committing the type 2 error. Now, it might seem a little bit vague on how we can view the type 1 and type 2 error, but it might make more sense if we're going to use this in the context of the problem. Now, for the type 1 error, that means rejecting the null hypothesis, even if the null hypothesis is true, means that the potato chip producer accepted the truckload of potatoes, which actually contains 8% of the blemished potato. And that is a type 1 error based out of our word problem. And the type 2 error, which means not rejecting the null hypothesis, even if the null hypothesis is false, means that the potato chip producer sent the truckload of potatoes away, which actually contains only less than 8% of blemished potatoes. Now, those are the type, type of errors that we might commit on using a sample of potatoes based on the truckloads from the supplier. Now, what are the consequences of a type 1 and a type 2 error for this particular word problem? So we will discuss that in the next slide. So once again, for a type 1 error, it is rejecting the null hypothesis even if the null hypothesis is actually true. By the consequences based of the producer, the potato chip producer made a batch of potatoes chip, potato chips from blemished potatoes which may upset the consumer. And that is one of the consequences that the producer might encounter by 
committing a type 1 error. And for committing a type 2 error, wherein we are not rejecting the null hypothesis, even if the null hypothesis is actually false, that means from the point of view of the producer or the potato chip producer, it will delay his production by rejecting the supply of potatoes, which may result in the loss of revenue. And that's the consequences of committing a type 1 error and a type 2 error in this particular hypothesis testing.